Hello, I'm Roman and welcome. Welcome back to the series of videos Neural Networks from Scratch in Go, where we using this book called Neural Networks from Scratch in Python, but we we writing everything with a Go like. What you just saw is the compilation of just a couple of videos from all of the videos that I recorded as the preparation for this one that you're watching right now. It took me about 50 to 60 hours and right now I'm finally can share the results with you. I recorded 73 videos in total, recording six videos per week, like almost every day to prove several points I want to share with you right now. But before we can go further, a little bit of background. I started a second YouTube channel where I post these live coding style type of the videos. And the first series is called Neural Networks from Scratch in Go. And the introduction that you saw in this video is the compilation from this series. I've been using the book called Neural Networks from Scratch in Python, but instead of the Python, I decided to write everything with the Golang. And if you want to ask and you're wondering why I decided to do this, that will be one of the topics that I would like to discuss here. And with this video, I want to explore three main ideas. Um, the first one is why and what was the reasons I decided to go like fully transparent and post the whole process of me learning neural networks from scratch in the Golang and make a video series from it. The second one is actually why I decided to use something different from the Python to do the machine learning stuff, because the Python is the main language in the area of the you know, deep learning, the machine learning, and all of this AI stuff. In my case, it's the Golang, but like the actual language is not that important. And last but not least, how the consistency makes any learning easier. So let's start with the transparency of posting the whole process and all of the videos on the YouTube, so everyone could watch it. On one hand, tech industry forces you to learn new things, but on the other hand, it kind of expects that you already know all of the things. And I keep saying that learning new stuff is a requirement to be in the tech industry. But when you don't know something, it's okay that you you will do mistakes. And I actually would say the opposite. You you have to do mistakes. You have to reread some material several times in order to you know, so the information will sink in. You will actually learn from doing stuff, doing mistakes, correcting the mistakes and iterate over and over. The post in the whole process on the YouTube, you can see me doing like silly mistakes, not understand some material from even from the several times. And this material probably somebody knows like for, for eternity, debugging, fixing the issues and going over and over. And it's just a showcase that you will do mistakes while you learn something. But but in the end, I learned all of the foundations about the neural networks from scratch from this book. And it actually doesn't matter right now how many mistakes and what were the mistakes since I passed the whole material and I understand it right now very good. And I would encourage you actually to do the same. Just forget about what others will think about you, forget about you know, stop comparing yourself, uh, for example, the speed of the learning with somebody else. It's just not worth it. And it's actually not helping at all. It's quite the opposite. And we'll talk about this like very soon, but with the dedication and the consistency, you can, you know, you can learn anything. The next one is actually, why would you choose a different language from the Python to do the deep learning stuff? Well, actually to learn a deep learning stuff. And if you take at the description of the book or if you take a look at one of the videos, you'll see that this book uses Python as the main programming language and it uses like very, I would say, already a standard libraries in the Python ecosystem like the NumPy, Matplotlib and others. Some time ago, I watched the course called Fuzz.ai and I think I already mentioned this course a couple of times on this channel. It's very hands-on and for me personally, it gave me this false belief that I understood properly some of the foundational stuff. It's like you're watching on the code, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's kind of, it makes sense and you just go on the ne next part. And I heard very good feedback about this neural network from scratch book, but I didn't want to fell into this same trap once again with all of this NumPy Python magic when you can operate with the arrays like in a, you know, do 
a complex computation in a single line of the code. I mean, it's okay when you need to do it in the production, but for the learning purposes, I wanted to have something more verbose to write all of the things with. So yeah, I decided to pick up the language that is very verbose and I decided to go with the Golang. The reason to the reason for the Golang specifically is I started to take a look at this before. I think it's a very interesting language. It's simple, not in a way that it's easy to understand, but it's, you know, it's very limited, not in a bad way. It's very verbose and it would require me to like really dig into the topic and really understand how I should implement it. So it was a good match, like the topic I want to dive into and the new programming language I want to try. As a result, I much, much, much better understand how things are structured and implemented and working inside the neural network. At least I'm talking about a very simple one. So uh, this book doesn't cover all of the possible uh, types of the neural networks and all possible types of the like layer separations, etc. But the general idea, like what was the what is the forward pass, what is the backward pass? Right now, when I'm checking all of the code that I wrote when I've been watching the fast AI course, yeah, it just makes more sense to me. And if you want to dig into the topic of the neural networks foundation specifically, I would advise you to try to do the same. Pick up a language that is not this dynamically type magic like the Python and try to implement the very simple training process of the neural network by yourself. I know you could do it in the C, you could do it in a Rust or in, I mean, there are tons of the different languages that will require you to write all of the things very verbose and accurate. You can use the book Neural Networks from the Scratch as the reference book, or you can find any other material. I mean, it's up to you. My personal opinion that the book is great and I would, you know, I would highly recommend you to check it. This video is not sponsored by the author of this Neural Networks from the Scratch book. And now let's talk about the consistency. I don't know, maybe it actually had to be the first point in this video, but I mean, okay. One of the main ideas of the second channel was to record videos very, very consistently. 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 I do have a habit to learn new things every day. It's just, you know, um, a habit that I developed. But, and I've been talking about this at one of the videos on this channel. But I wanted not just to talk about this, you know, it's very easy to tell something like this, but I want to actually showcase this. And with posting of these videos, I want to encourage you to do the same. I mean, not the post videos, but I mean, if you want, you can do this. Spend some time every day learning new things. And the idea is the same, to build a habit of learning. You can just count. If you won't do anything like every day, zero is always zero. But if you spend 50 minutes, you know, maybe record or maybe reading some book, watching a course, trying to build something new with the new programming languages, etc., etc. 15 minutes, four times, four times per week is already an hour. And, you know, hour is bigger than the zero. And if, if you will continue to do the same, for example, for the next year, you will spend 15, 15 54 hours on some topic which is way bigger than zero it's a very simple math the the key here is to build a habit and here i would recommend a very popular book that i actually read in occasionally because i want to you know not just read it once and forget about the things but i want to read the chapter and incorporate into my life and it's called atomic habits at least what i've read and the idea is you need to focus on building a habit of, of doing something. So you need to build a system rather than worrying about the result too much. It's not like you should not worry about the result, but your focus should be on building a system. Once you establish this habit of doing something regularly, it's actually easier to do than not to do. Again, for example, Neural Networks from Scratch is more than 600 pages book of very concentrated material with the theory and the code. And and yeah, just I think two and a half months passed and it's done. Another side effect of recording this series was actually that 
I had so much enjoy of using like new programming language, working with the different, uh, different area of application, you know, with the ecosystem, etc. While I've been studying this, comparing to what I do on the you know, like day-to-day -day job. I started to learn new programming language. I started to use NeoVim way more, and I have a video about this. You can watch. Another thing that, I mean, um, I had a plan to post regularly on the YouTube to showcase that, hey, you can do this, you can do anything with the consistency. But I thought, okay, who will watch those type of the videos? And I was gladly surprised that I was mistaken. There were people who commented, cheered me up, told me that keep going, that was really motivating and actually decided to start a Discord channel from this series and people joining and we actually had a conversation from time to time and yeah, this is, I mean, this is really cool. So let's do some summary from all of the things that I told here and what it's up to you. Don't be afraid to admit and show that you don't know something yet. With the time and dedication, you can learn anything. Focus on building the habit of learning new things and stop comparing yourself to other people. Again, as many people before me told that you should compare yourself to yourself yesterday. And that's it. Build silly and small things. Maybe they are not actually silly and maybe they are not that small at all. Because who knows, maybe while you will be digging into some topic, you will create a tool or, I don't know, a product or something else that will be, you know, the next Slack or something like this. Just a couple of examples. Slack used to be an internal chat tool. Um, I don't remember what was the, uh, what the company did before, but it doesn't matter. Or there is a Unity, the game engine that was created while they've been developing um, a game. And the game was a disaster, but Unity is one of the top game engines right now in the game development world. So build silly things, build, try, try to do things, uh, post it. And who knows, I will, I will do the same. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.